Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It's lecture time, the best time of the week, fabulous time of the week. Every Wednesday, same time, same place, lecture time. And this week, guys, dissecting charts like a professional. That's what we're talking about. How you can be a better trader by literally getting more granular in the charts that you're looking at. Most of you out there, you're not tracking your trades in a tracking spreadsheet. You're not copying those trades, the chart, screenshotting the chart and putting it into a PowerPoint or printing off that chart and marking up that chart. Most of you are not doing any of those things. So if you want to be successful in this business, you better start doing those things. Okay. Look, you're not going to be successful by just, you know, things falling out of the sky. No one's just going to throw you hundred dollar bills out of the sky. Okay. It doesn't work like that. You are going to have to work your ass off to be good at this business. And if you are not interested in doing that, choose another business. So today we're going to talk about dissecting charts. And the reason we're going to do that is many of you are trading in a vacuum. You're literally looking at three or four or five bars and you're like, Oh, look at that pattern. Then you take the trade and you're not looking at everything around you. Okay. So we're going to break it down, dissect it, very, very detailed, granularly, et cetera, okay, to look at the areas where you're making mistakes. We're looking at that bar by bar approach to be the best trader that you can be. I am telling you, this business is one of the most challenging things you will ever try in your entire life. And many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. And yet, and yet, you're still making excuses for your lack of effort. You don't have a plan, you're gonna fail. You don't have an accountability partner, you're going to fail. You don't have a trade tracking spreadsheet. You're going to fail. You're not going to give this business two or three years to get good at. You're going to fail. Tell me I didn't just encompass most everybody out there. So if you want to be that small percentage of people that succeeds, you'll listen to the advice that I have to say because I've been doing it quite a long time and I know what works. Today, dissecting charts is what works. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is dissecting charts like a pro. Um, many folks out there think they understand charts, um, but in reality, they do not understand them as well as they think. And where I'm going with this is you need to, as a trader, be able to take past price action to help you predict future price movement. Oh, wait, that's the definition of technical analysis trading. Okay. That is what we do. We use past price action to help predict future price movement. And if you can't predict the past or understand the past, you're going to have a hard time predicting the future. And that goes bar by bar. Okay. Pivot by pivot, different time frames, learning what a bottoming tail, topping tail, major support, minor support, trend lines, all that stuff is. And I've said it to you guys many times and I'll continue to say it. When you go and study your charts at the end of the day, because I know you're all doing that, right? Wink, wink. We all know that you're taking pictures of every trade that you took, and at the end of the day, you're reviewing them, right? Ha, ha, ha. You should be. You need to be. And if you're not, you're not going to do so well in this business. Um, but when you do that, my recommendation to you is get a PowerPoint or some program similar to that and just take a screenshot and put it into the PowerPoint. Like I do these PowerPoints, you'll see here. Take a screenshot of the trade you took and then put arrows where you got in, lines, where the trend line is, all that stuff. But do two for each one. One, where you cover the future and then take a look at the trade and go, would I have taken this again? And then the second one, where you have the future uncovered so you can actually see the finality of the trade, right? Go bar by bar. And even if you have to, print it off and take a piece of paper and just kind of move it over and move it over bar by bar by bar by bar. That's the best way you're going to learn. And a lot of people ask the question, well, how do you dissect things so quickly? Or how is your order entry so fast? Or how do you discern whether that's a good or bad trade? It's called practice, experience. Look, the only difference between a professional and a novice is that a professional can repeat it over and over and over and over again, regardless of the situation. You go play golf, you might you know, take 100 shots to get around the course. Guess what? A few of those shots are gonna be pro level shots. Even if it's just dumb luck, you'll make a 30 foot putt. You'll hit one right down the center of the fairway. Those are pro level shots. The problem is they can do it 70 times around and you can do it five times around. That's the difference. 
Same in tennis, same in basketball, same with all that stuff. So every once in a while, let me guess, you took a really great trade, but most of the time you're not because you're not able to dissect the chart like a pro when you need to in real time all the time. And that's the key, in real time all the time. Okay, so let's take a look, guys, at dissecting some of these charts. And again, this lecture was born out of a couple of requests from folks to say, hey, can you do some bar by bar analysis? Can you take a look at some of some charts uh, separately so we can take a look at them? So what does the chart say? And this is a theme I want you guys to keep in mind. What does the chart say? OK, right. Always ask what the chart is saying to you. Don't tell the chart what you think let the chart speak to you all right you're not there to tell the chart anything it's there to talk to you and you're there to garner that information and do something with it okay so we take a look at this okay whoops and if we start on the left because we always do and we have a stock that's downtrending and then we have a little kind of gap here and then the stock bullies and then leaves a bottoming tail and then bullies so if you take a look at this i mean there is a lot of information here Okay, a lot. So at first glance, you could look at this and say, well, maybe there is a sell setup right here. See it right there, right here. Now, something I want you to keep in mind is, is this at the trend line, through the trend line, above the trend line? Does it have a rounding top, a V top? Like you're going to have a checklist of things that you're looking for, and it's going to have to meet a certain percentage or a certain number of those things on the checklist. OK, um, so, for example, you might have 10 things on your checklist. If it doesn't mean at least seven, you're not taking the trade. Why would I suggest that? Well, for two reasons. One, it takes a lot of the thought process out of trading, right? You sit there and just go check, 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 check. Oh, no check. And if it doesn't meet the criteria, that's it. You move on. And by doing that checklist, guess what? You're teaching yourself unconscious competence. You do that checklist enough times, 100, 200, 500 times, it's just automatic, automatic, automatic. And that's when you're getting closer to that pro level uh, dissection that we're referring to. OK, so you take a look here. This might be considered an acceptable sell setup, right? I mean, you have a red bar engulfing the green bar over here. You do have a lower low and you do have a relatively smooth bounce with two topping tails. So what do we have? We have a stock that's bouncing after a big move lower, okay. But during the bounce, sellers are creeping in. Topping tail here, topping tail here. Then you finally get a green bar right here, but then it gets engulfed by the red bar. So yeah, you could argue that that's an acceptable sell setup. And as is always the case on sell setups, the prior pivot low is our first target. And this gets down to that area, not quite to the bottom, but near it. Then this happens. And that bottoming tail is a definite concern, right? We saw one of those on Meta yesterday. I said, oh boy, guys, oh boy, that bottoming tail is a concern if we want to short this thing, right? And then Meta went higher about four bucks, five bucks, right? So now you look at this sell setup. Maybe you scalped a little bit out of it. Maybe you didn't, but this is new information. And the new information now says big bottoming tail with a slightly higher low. Therefore, when this creeps up and you see a change of color bar, narrow body bar, topping tail bar, what do you do with it? And this is where I need you guys to chime in. You're not getting off that easy today. This is where I need you guys to chime in. Good sell setup. Yes or no. What do you guys think? Yes or no? Is this something you want to short? Now, to be fair, you have the benefit of the future here, but I'm trying to ask you, ignore the future and just look at that for what it is, okay? No, this is not the world's best sell setup. And the reason being is, one, it's coming from a double bottom, okay? Two, that bottoming tail is no joke. Like, that's a very, very significant fight that was fought, and the buyers won by a lot, okay? And then you're bouncing back up about 70% mm, perhaps, something like that. So the level and depth of retracement's a little bit too much, okay? Um, and then you look at it, maybe the risk to reward's okay because it's a narrow range bar, right? The top to bottom here probably gives you reasonable risk to reward. But this double bottom after a big move lower is deeply concerning. Now here's the thing, 
If you're trying to scalp a little tiny pullback, maybe. But if you're trying to literally get to the low, that's a very, very, very tough trade, right? It's a very tough trade, okay? So I would not personally not be interested in taking this stock. Um, and there are very few circumstances in which I could, could make a good reason for it. I mean, if the market was about to tank and you knew it, maybe, but that's still tough. And it's the same thing I was talking about Meta today. Why go after the hard money when the easy money is everywhere else? Does that make sense? And just because it works doesn't mean it wasn't hard money, right? So in this case, if you did take it, it would be tough money. It would be hard money. So personally for me, no, this double bottom is too potent with that bottoming tail. If this had put in a significant lower low, maybe, but it didn't. So no. Then what happens? We move higher, green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar. So now we have broken this pivot high right here. All right. So if you put a line on that, we're above this prior pivot high. What's something else that's not really on here? And I'll draw it now for you guys. I mean, if you want to draw that line like that, right? And we'll make that, I don't know, orange because we usually do, right? What are we doing here? We just broke above the trend line. If we had a moving average, we probably broke above the moving average. We had a pseudo failed sell set up here. We retested the low with a bottoming tail. I mean, there is, there is nothing bearish about this stock anymore. So now, after you see this right here, right? After you see this one, two, three, four, five bar move, what is your thought process? Talk to me. I need to hear it from you guys. After we break this prior pivot high and we put in this five bar move higher. What is the thought process? What are you thinking? You should be saying one word or two words, I guess. But you should be thinking one thing. Buyers are stepping up. That's true. Okay. Bouncing back up. The word begins with a T and it ends with an N. Okay. Soon as you see this, you should be thinking this is a likely transition. This is a likely transition. Okay. You have a double bottom retest, a break above the trend line, a break above the prior pivot high. You're looking at this going, hey, on a micro time frame, we're going from a stage four downtrend into a double bottom stage one retest and failure, then breaking the trend line, then failing the sell setup, then putting in a higher high. Everything here points to transition, transition, transition. Therefore, your thought process has to also transition from weakness to bullishness, okay? Now, obviously, it would be nice to have more information here, but now you're saying to yourself, hmm, now I have a stock that has proven to be strong. Buyers are overcoming sellers. So now we have this next good buy setup question right here. So this one right here. Good buy setup, yes or no? Talk to me. Good buy setup, yes or no? I'm going to remove this trend line for now. Good buy setup, yes or no? Right here. Come on, people. Come on. It's okay to be wrong. You just get yelled at. There's nothing wrong with being yelled at. It's how you learn in life. <laughs> just, I'm just messing with you. You're not going to get yelled at, okay? The group will get yelled at. All right. What have you guys noticed in the responses? There's a lot of indecision, right? There's, I would say, probably 60% yeses, 40% noes. But there's a lot of folks that are very uncertain about this. Okay. So when you look at it, you have to dissect it and say, okay, what are the good positive things and what are some of the negative things? Well, some of the positives are what we talked about. Double bottom retest and failure, bottoming tail, break above the trend line, higher highs. Okay, that's good. Those are positives. Some of the negatives. Well, the higher high isn't a significant new high, right? It's not, even though it came from the bottom, which is very potent and powerful, 
it just peekabooed over. Okay, the pullback is a little bit shallow, not terribly shallow, but a little bit shallow. Okay, um, so you're looking at that going, well, which overrides which? The positives or the negatives here? Well, in my opinion, the positives far override or outweigh the negatives for multiple reasons. This is a good thing that this is a shallow retracement. We don't often say that. It's rare that we say that. This is actually a good thing that the retracement is slightly shallower, right? Two, on this pullback, during this pullback, we actually have a green bar here on this third bar. We go red bar, red bar, green bar, right? And that's a good thing. That means buyers are starting to step up. Then we got a bottoming tail bar, significant bottoming tail, with a narrow body bar as well. So while I'm not backing the truck up for this transitionary buy setup, I am looking at this and going, this is pretty decent, right? This is pretty good. Um, the stock has already proven buyers are in control. So whether or not I really like this would probably depend on the higher time frame. But what I'm seeing on this chart here, I would say that's an acceptable buy setup. Yes, is it slightly more aggressive? It is. And if you were concerned about that, what would you do? Talk to me. If you were concerned about this being aggressive, you have one of two choices. You have one of two choices, in my opinion. Give it more room. Well done, well done, okay? You could do smaller risk, which is technically giving it more room in a way, or just not take it, right? So those are the two things I would look at. I would say, give it more room or just don't take it. For me, I would just give it more room. The odds that this thing pulls back and retests the prior low are pretty slim, pretty slim, okay? So I would take it because I like it, but I would probably just give it a little more room, a little more wiggle room down in this area somewhere. You're gonna have, if you're right, if you're right, and it is a transition, if you're right, you're gonna have opportunity to add back. And we see that later, right? Green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar, pull back, buy set up again. So the add, yes or no? Well, what do you guys think? Would you add here, yes or no? Now remember, having the future here damages your perception potentially. But would you add at this spot, yes or no? Yes, no, no. Big red volume. Yes, yes, yes. Jordan's on an island, not by himself though completely. If I were an adder, yes, no. Wait until it passes the prior pivot. Depends on the time of the day, probably. See, now, real quick, real quick, side comment. You guys are live traders, trained traders, okay? And there's still not a consensus here. Why do I comment on this? Because, you know, every once in a while we look at a chart and you literally, we have all done it before. We've all done it before. And you look and go, who would buy that there? Oh my gosh. And somebody is. And sometimes it's you. Because someone else feels the exact opposite. Someone else is going, well, who would short that there? And you're going, well, who would buy that there? Right? And you have conflicting opinions and emotions. Um, so anyway, the point I'm making is even people that have similar backgrounds in their training have differing opinions at times. This case, say you bought that buy setup earlier and now the stock is moving up and moving up. And it's a pretty strong move, right? I mean, it's a pretty good size green bars. And then it pulls back. Now, what I think is throwing you guys off, I'm pretty certain of it, is this little section right in here, right in there. If this was a little green bar, if we went like, oh, I don't know, let's, let's do that real quick, okay? We have time, right? There's no rush. What if we just did this, okay? Right there, and uh, we made that red. And what if we just move that bad boy right there, okay? that over a little bit what if we just did that with it how many of you changed your opinion now how many of you changed your opinion now so you let that one little bar in there okay you let that one little bar in there completely change your opinion why all over some little doji bar again 
let's get rid of it for a second. All over that. All over that. Oh, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. So you're saying, well, the pullback's not quite as smooth. Well, it does have the lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. You are sitting on minor price support at roughly a 40 or 50% retracement with a bottoming tail in a stock that has proven to you that it has a lot of strength. Why wouldn't you add here is the question, right? Why wouldn't you add here is the question. Think about the buy setup for a second. You have a stock that just recently transitioned. When a stock recently transitions, it usually has lots of room to go higher. Not always, but most of the time. It has lots of room to go higher, okay? Hence the big pullback, okay? We already know buyers are stepping up because of the earlier transition period. We already know there's big time buying uh, West Michigan commitment here because of the size of these bars, right? Look at the size of these bars. Look at the volume of these bars, right? Okay, then we get a pullback to support. Retracement level is great. Oh, oh, wait, what, what was that one thing we forgot to add on here? Hold on, let's do it just for shits and giggles. Take the lowest point of the chart. Take the lowest point of the chart. Where, oh, oh my gosh, we're at a trend line? We're probably at a moving average. We're at a 40 to 50% retracement. We're at minor price support. What? And you guys are sitting here going just back and forth. All because of all because of that. All because of that. Stop looking at the leaves and the bark only. Look at the whole picture. Look at the bigger picture. Look at the roots. Look at the trees. Look at the forest. Look at the whole thing. Don't just focus, oh my gosh, there's one little tiny blemish. There's like a little worm who cut a hole in this little tiny leaf in this whole tree. And all of a sudden, because of that, you've deemed this unacceptable. Okay? No one is perfect. No chart is ever perfect, 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 but they get damn close. All right? Read the chart bar by bar by bar. And I just want to make one comment. We just spent 50 to 20 minutes on one chart. How much time are you spending on your charts? Because you could spend a long time if you're really dissecting it bar by bar by bar. And then if you're also running those ideas off of your trading partner, your trading buddy, your accountability partner, all right? And you go back and forth and say to yourself, well, why would you have done this? What's the thought process? Well, I would have done this, this is why. And then you go back and forth. And that's what you're supposed to do, okay? Next one here, let the chart guide you. So we have a stock that on the left-hand side looked higher, pulled all the way back, bounced, double bottom retest, okay? Bounced, pulled back, bounced, and then starts a little bit of a waterfall over here. Got really choppy for a while, right? And then one, two, three, four, five bars down. So many people would look to buy this, okay? Hold on one second. Let's move that. There we go. Many people would look to buy this. Why or why not would you take this long? What do you guys think? You're looking to buy this long? You want to get this back up to $28? Maybe you want to scalp it. Maybe you want to buy it for a bigger picture. What are you guys thinking? Yes, no, maybe so. You're down one, two, three, four bars, and this last bar here, granted there's no volume here, I should have kept the volume on. This last one's a wide range bar. You do get a change of color bar here. Yes, it is a little bit under support, right? It's a little bit under support. What are you thinking? Hmm? Risky, try to catch a falling knife. Ah, it didn't seem to matter on Meta today. No, people do it every day. It's not trending lower. It can make a sell setup. Still in the downtrend, so no. I would be waiting for the breakdown and retest and not go, oh, interesting, JW. Okay. Need ending volume? Okay. What if it had ending volume there? What if we just had a big old, you know, let's do that again. Just say for shits and giggles. What if right there you saw this huge, huge, Volume spike at the bottom there. What if, what if you saw that? Right there, right under that bar. Bounce up to a newly formed resistance and short. Ooh, Jason, 
thinking like a pro. Bounce up to newly formed resistance, 27.90 perhaps, and then look to short it. Well, now we're getting on to something here. The good news is most of you, most of you, okay, are not terribly interested in buying this. That's a good sign. Now, I'm not suggesting that it may not bounce a little bit. It could. And honestly, we kind of hope it does. Because if it does and doesn't bounce too much, we're going to be looking for what? That sell setup that Jason just talked about, right? That bounce back up into this area, 2790, whatever it is, and then say, hey, let's short this bad boy. Okay. But you could also, some people make the argument, well, you know, it is only 10 cents, 15 cents away from this double bottom. The point I'm making here is sometimes a chart forces a decision in terms of it's not clear. There are scalpers out there. Well, I'm only looking for 15 cents. We've seen it. I mean, how many times, guys, have you seen Cass take a stock where you're like, whoa, and then he's like, out for 12 cents. Next. So expectation matters quite a bit in trading. And we talk about that, right? Expectation matters a lot. So I would say this. Generally speaking, 80, 90% of the time, you wouldn't be hugely interested in buying this. If you were a micro, micro scalper and you're looking for 10, 20 cents, you might be able to make that argument. But this is what happens to it, right? This is what happens to it. It bounces, it does that little tiny bounce that we just re referenced and talked about and then leaves a big old topping tail and then gets crushed, right? And it says here, trading against a strong move even after a change of color bar is high risk. The odds are with the power of the move. So you have to know, you have to know, if you choose to go long there, you better be super nimble, Simone Biles type stuff, okay? Because this stock, generally speaking, is not a long, it's a short play. So if you're gonna go long on it, you better be light on your feet, quick to get in, quick to get out, move on. For most of you, this is not where you want to be. I'm going to say it again. For most of you, this is not where you want to be. It's, it's too difficult to make money off that. And that's, I say it all the time. Why? Why look for hard money when there's easy money laying around? Sophia put the quote in there last week. I just wait for the money to drop on the floor and I pick it up. Instead of like literally having to dig the floor up to find it, you just wait for the money that's already laying on the floor. So you just bend over and pick it up. No, you guys are like, oh, there's money here somewhere. Let me get the jackhammer out and start digging through 12 inches of concrete. Tell me I'm wrong. And Derek kind of said it. Honestly, I take way too many trades that are unclear. Guys, there's always something else out there. The only reason that you would take a trade that's unclear is FOMO or ego or both. FOMO, ego, both. Okay? There's, there's no reason to do it. And this is a prime example of a stock that's likely to go much lower, okay? So you would just walk away from this or short it if it gave you a sell setup, but this isn't really a good enough sell setup, okay? So what caused this drop? Well, let's take a look at this, okay? We have a stock here, all right, and the market. Stock left, market right, okay? This in pink, just FYI, is a blown up version of this on the left. So if you take a look at the stock, it opens, goes lower, chops around, goes lower, chops around. It's very choppy on this pullback, okay? So red bar, red bar, that's smooth, but then it gets really choppy, then green bar, then topping tail, pulls back double top. Now, I wanna follow the blue arrow here, follow the blue arrow, boop, 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 boop. And this is a blown up version of what you see on the left. So let's focus on the blown up version so you can see it a little more clearly. Um, this wide range green bar does take out a lot of these bars to the left, one, two, three, four bars. And what you need to do, and we talk about a lot, is look inside the bar. What is this bar accomplishing? Well, one, it's showing you that there's a lot of commitment from the buyers, right? There's a lot of commitment here, all right? Over here, what you'll notice before the green bar is, pretty big tug of war on the way down, wasn't there? Massive bottoming tail engulfed by a red bar. Then this bar with the topping tail used to be fully green. 
So that's a pretty bearish sign right there, right? You have a bottoming tail, which is bullish, but then a red bar comes in and engulfs the bottoming tail. But then a green bar comes in and engulfs the red bar, but leaves a topping tail. Then you get a move lower that leaves a bottoming. I mean, you have a battle going on here all over the place. All right. And then a wide range green bar comes in and then a big ass topping tail. So you have to ask yourself at all times, what are these bars telling me? Topping tail, sellers, big green bar, buyers. OK, and on this pullback, you're getting a little bit of a slight bullish sentiment here, correct? Bottoming tail, slightly bullish. Bottoming tail, slightly bullish. Then it gets engulfed by a red bar bearish, but then it gets engulfed by a green bar, and the level and depth of penetration is over 100%. Then green bar, but where does the green bar go? Right back to this prior pivot high where sellers creeped in earlier. So what you really have here is what? Come on, say it loud, say it proud, say it with me. You have a shit show. That's what's going on here. Every other bar, every two bars, somebody's winning. Nope, now they're losing. Nope, now they're, now they're losing. And you're just going back and forth, pulling those rose petals. She loves me. She loves me not. Right? And you're sitting there and you're like, man, this is tough. Why am I bringing a chart like this up to you guys? I'm bringing a chart like this up to you guys so that you can understand Sometimes things aren't worth playing with. Sometimes things are just so yucky. You just need to kind of push it aside and go, yeah, you know, you seem like a nice person and all, but you don't check any of my boxes. This, I got to move on here, okay? That doesn't mean, and I mean this when I say it, that doesn't mean there's not a redeeming quality about this chart. I'm showing it to you for a reason. You need to study these charts too. You can't just study perfect charts. You need to study crappy charts, too, so you can understand what shit looks like. I'm not trying to be funny. I mean it. You need to understand what crap looks like, too, so that when you get the really good ones, they pop out easy. You can discern them quite quickly. All right. So then what happens is after the double top, you get a pullback, which is to be expected. The problem with the pullback is there's so much junk to the left. There's nothing shortable here, right? There's so much junk to the left. You're not shorting this double top. Granted, it worked, but it's not something you would look to short. And it goes lower, red bar, red bar, bottoming tail. Note the bottoming tail. Why? Because of the prior pivot. Buyers stepped up once. They stepped up over here. Then a red bar engulfed it. And then it went lower. So... Where I'm going with this is, this chart for the first hour of the day was dog shit. It really was. From 9.30 to 10.30, this chart was really about as sloppy as you want to be. Then it gets this waterfall move down and puts in a new low. The reason this is important is, one, the market is also weak. If we go all the way to the right-hand side here, right around 10.30, 10.45, the market is also weak. The stock is weak. That's good. Okay, that's good. But then it bounces. And the bounce is actually a shortable opportunity because the bounce is smooth. You get a topping tail. There's a little bit of resistance over here, right? This is an area where it previously tried to bounce but failed. So this is an area where it's bouncing again, but likely should fail. Okay, so this topping tail right here, right around 11 o'clock, just after 11 o'clock, this is a shortable opportunity. So you can actually short this because the stock started to behave correctly, act properly, get its act together. Now, there's a lot of congestion at the bottom here at 206. So if you short this at 207.50, all right, with a stop at 208, you have to know that 206 is your target. Yes, it went lower, but that target doesn't mean you can't hold some. I'm simply saying your first target is firm here. That, that's a firm area. It's a double bottom. If you took that on a micro time frame, this is a little double bottom. Yes or no? Yes. Bottoming tail here, micro time frame bounce. So you have to know when it pulls back into that area, you got to sell some. You got to cover some of that position. Not all, some. Shallow bounce again, continues lower. And then it starts to change the corner. But guys, I brought this chart up for you simply to say, look, 
there is something to be learned from every chart. From every single chart you look at, there's something to be learned. Now, in real time, you might just go, next, I got to move on. Fine. But at the end of the day, you want to go back and take a look at that chart. Okay, because it did ultimately give an opportunity in a downtrending market. All right, let's move on. I have, wow, man. Like, remember I said, hey, this lecture might be a little shorter today. <laughs> I'm like way behind. We have like seven more charts to get through. Okay, all right, vacuum trading. You guys know how much I love vacuum trading, clean house and all, right? What we have here is three bar play, right? A stock that gaps down a little bit, leaves a big topping tail. Well, that's good. That means sellers are in control. It was a green bar at one point. Now it's a red bar. Then followed by a narrow range resting bar. And then you have an entry at 639.35 with a stop at 642.65. Okay. Right. And you look at that right there and you're like, oh, sweet baby Jane. Looks good. This is what vacuum trading looks like. Okay. Take out everything. You hone in on just three bars and you go, yep, I'm going to take that trade. Mistake. Just don't do it. Okay, just don't do it. Yeah, you know what's interesting, Michael? Seriously, that's, I'm glad you did that for me. You know why? Because I am not kidding you. Yesterday, I highlighted this and I spell checked it and it literally came across. I'm going to try it right now. Let's try it right now. All right? F7. See? Look. Look at it. Spell check complete. How is that possible? Right? Don't we need to call Microsoft? It literally says spell check complete. I don't know, my man. I don't know. But we'll change it for you. Let's see. Let's try it again. Spell check complete. <laughs> Apparently, vacuum trading is confusing Microsoft. Um, but anyway, you don't want to trade in a vacuum, guys. All right. This right here, this is what vacuum trading looks like. Okay. Now you're like, whoa, wait one second here. There's the five minute chart. There's the 15 minute chart. All of a sudden you're not looking at past data. You're not looking at future data. You're in trouble, okay? This stock is sitting in an area of 15 minute support, okay? Right, does that make sense? 15 minute support over here. Right over here on the five minute, there's support at 636 to 638. It's an area, and you're getting in at 639 with a $3 stop loss, okay? Apparently, Microsoft can't either, Ben, so don't feel bad, right? So you're getting with a $3.30 stop loss. And yes, it went 1R. It went 1R, okay? But look how choppy it was. It dropped, left a huge bottoming tail at support, left a topping tail, then engulfed, then retested, then bounced. This right here is not something you would take. But yet some people would look and go, Jared, look at the three bar play. And I'm like, yeah, but there's not much there. And you look at the 15 minute, like, yeah, no, and there's not much there. So this is something I would stay away from, right? Even though the actual three bar play was pretty nice, but where it was happening is garbage. Five minute support, 15 minute support, don't take it. Don't get caught up in a vacuum. Look at the higher time frame, look at the lower time frame, and discern is this something that I want to really put my money into? And there's another comment I want to make, and I make it from time to time, but not enough. Look, I'm guessing, for the most part, there are always some exceptions out there, okay? I'm guessing that the majority of you work hard for your money. And um, sometimes, most of the time, you feel like you're underpaid and you should be making double what you should be making and your boss doesn't pay you enough. So if you keep that in mind, that you work hard for your money and you feel like you're worth more than what you're getting paid, then why would you so easily, so cavalierly just piss it away in the market? Just throw it at the market. Yeah, take my money. Yeah, I know this trade's not that good, but just take my money. Why? Ah, because my ego can't hold back, right? My ego is just like, yeah, I got to take it. And then guess what? Now you got to work overtime to get it back. And I don't mean trading overtime. I mean that other J-O-B thing that you're doing while you're supporting your trading dream. That's what's going to happen to you. If you throw your money at garbage like this, garbage in, garbage out, okay? Quality in, quality out. Keep that in mind every time you find yourself in the urge to take something this crappy. Don't do it. 
All right. Another example. Here's a stock. Yes, they're both the same chart. I just blew it up over here. Yes, it's the same chart. Okay. But you have a 15 minute chart, wide range red bar, narrow bar, narrow bar. So basically a four bar play here. Okay. It went 3R. Good trade. Bad trade. Talk to me. Talk to me, Goose. It went 3R. Was it a good trade or a bad trade? Talk to me. G or N? Good or bad? G or B? G or B, I guess. Good trade, bad trade. Brian says bad trade. Both Brian's agree. I guess it's a Brian thing. Bad shorting in the sport depends what your management target is for the trade. Interesting. Bad. Intraday good. Higher time frame. Eh. Okay. There wasn't much confirmation. Bad, bad. So most people are saying bad. Jordan's saying good. Jason's saying depends. Depends on expectations. Steve says I don't see a trade. Well, there's definitely a four bar play there. The question is, do you like where it's happening? All right. It gapped up so I would have a bullish bias. Oh, Moises. Hold on a second. Whoa. Time out. Gap up doesn't mean bullish. Gap down doesn't mean bearish. Okay? I want that to be very clear. PTS talks about that. Gap up doesn't automatically mean bullish. And gap down doesn't automatically mean bearish. So when you say it gapped up, that's not a good enough reason. Okay? I'm just going to tell you right now. That's not a good enough reason. Okay? So... Let's get back to the thing at hand. So what happens here is you have some support at $88. You're getting in at 89 with a stop at 90. This stock is, there's a good chance anyway, it should bounce at 88. Why? Well, it tested and bounced. It retested here and gapped up. Okay? Tested, 88, bounced. Retested, 88, gapped up. Odds suggest... The next time it gets here, it's going to bounce, okay? So if you choose to take this at $89, you're playing with fire here because support is an area. That area could be 8888. That area could be 8688. Who knows? But it's an area. So if you choose to take that at $89, you are definitely playing with some fire right there, okay? So while, yes, it did go, 3R, it went $3. Look at the bottoming tail in the area of support bouncing. Another bottoming tail, another bottoming tail meets the bottom right there and then it just starts to rip. So for me, not something that I would be looking to take. It's just, it's not worth it. It's possible that it'll go a dollar or two. I would not have expected three to be honest with you, but it's possible it goes a dollar or two. But this is a tough one. It's a tough one because you don't know where those buyers are ultimately going to step up. Now, now, to be clear, would outside information help me? For example, if the market was super weak or the market was super strong, something like that. Maybe, but it's still a tough trade no matter what. No matter what, this is a tough trade. So while you might be able to squeeze a little bit out of it, I don't think it's worth the trouble. What is worth the trouble is when you take a trade like this, okay, on Futu, and you get a nice three bar play that has lots of room to go lower, and then you ride it lower and you go and make, I don't know, whatever I made on this thing, a couple, two, three grand, okay? Wide bar, narrow bar, whole number, room to drop, and it drops smoothly. You get your $2 stop loss and you walk away from it, right? Um, that is a decent trade. You don't want to go back and look at something like this and go, well, why? It's not, you see, I don't understand. It's not just a bottom. It's a double bottom on a 15-minute chart. Repeat myself. It's not a bottom. It's a double bottom on a 15-minute chart. Okay? And ultimately, it ends up being a triple bottom, but it did go lower. To be fair, it did break that area, and then it bounced all the way back. Okay? Um, so, Kazo has what's the news? Anyway, um, keep it simple. Take a stock that has a good gap, has void below, and gives you a pattern, and then write it down. That's it. Take a stock that has a good gap, has void below, 
has a beautiful pattern and preferably you could add in some relative strength or relative weakness to that as well. Okay, now, what about this? 15 minutes super three bar, but do you see how much easier this money is? The stock is already in a downtrend. It had a little breakdown over here, it goes lower. Goes lower, consolidates, gaps down. It tries to bully, right? Tries to bully, and after the bully, a wide range red bar comes in. You can see it, I blew it up over here on the right. There is the green bar, gaps down and bullies. Wide range green a red bar comes in, engulfs it. So now you know sellers are in control. We knew that already. Why? Because it's in a downtrend. This just reconfirms the weakness. Then we get a tiny little resting bar and then off to the races. But after you get the super, the super three bar play and it moves lower, I mean, quite significantly, it was like $5 lower, whatever it is. Then what happens? Bounces, retests, does not put in a new low. That moves over now. That moves over. Now, granted, it's the end of the day, but that moves over now at least for today, right? That's the money play. This is easy money. That one, two slides ago, that's hard money. You gotta ask yourself, FOMO or ego or both? FOMO, ego or both? Which one is, which one is it? Why are you putting yourself in that position? Do you have to take that trade? Is there literally nothing else out? There's thousands of stocks out there. There's nothing else you can find. If that's it, then I wouldn't take it comes to something like this, you're just in a beautiful downtrend with a confirmation of weakness and a beautiful pattern with room to go lower. That's it. That's it. Just let it go. Take the good stuff. Take the good stuff, you'll have good results. Take the bad stuff and your hand's going to be caught in that cookie jar and it can be painful. You don't want it to be in there, right? You guys remember this one from last week? Trend line bounce buy opportunity. Remember that? Support area, Riven. You look at the 15 minutes. Some people are like, whoa, wait a second. This was right at the trend line. And we bid for it down here. Remember, I got in a little early, but I think we got 23. We started at 24 ish, and then we added, and we got a 23.65 cost average, and we got out for 20 cents got out at 23.85 and it ended up going 50 cents. Why? It's happening on a trend line at 15 minute support. Pivot here, pivot here, bottoming tail here, minor price support down here as well. Minor price support, 15 minute support at a trend line support. You're going to get a bounce. Now, this stock ultimately went like back above the high of the day. I was not expecting that, but this is also great trading. Now to a new trader, this might look like difficult trading, but it is not. You're at a trend line. You're at 15 minutes support and you have minor support over here as well. Not expecting a new high, but a 20 to 50 cent bounce is absolutely in the cards. Okay. Do you guys remember this one? Wasn't that long ago. It was a week ago. Gap down on Amazon. Market moves higher. Amazon moves lower. Right? While the market's grinding higher and chopping, Amazon just going lower and lower, and then it bounces back up to minor price resistance, 50% retracement, holds that little micro trend line right there, and the market comes into resistance, boom, sells off Amazon, boom. We took this trade, we made money. That is easy trading. Don't make this so difficult on yourselves, okay? Guys, the reason I did this lecture today See, a lot of you, you want me to just pull out a, a page or two out of professional trading strategies. And you say, okay, well, yes, let's talk about psychology or let's talk about bottoming tails or let's talk about money management. That's great. And it's important and it's something you need to do. But if you aren't taking these charts every day, the trades you took, the trades you missed, the trades you wanted to take, remember those three binders? Green folder, winning trades. Red folder, losing trades. Blue folder for trades that you wanted to take but didn't. Okay? You need to be, and I don't care when I say folder. It could just be different PowerPoints, different tabs. Okay? You need to be dissecting charts every single day. You should be able to look at a chart and explain it to anybody in five seconds. You know, one of the things that helps me as a trader is talking to you guys every day because I have to be able to explain my decisions 
and I have to be able to dissect your ideas. So all I do is look at charts every day. See, when somebody brings up an idea, 90% of the chat room is not looking at that. I'm looking at every idea brought up. I want you to think about what I just said. I'm learning as I'm teaching and teaching as I'm learning. Does that make sense? So Brian brings up a chart. I'm looking at it. He says, Jared, what do you think of Microsoft? I'm looking at Microsoft, dissecting that chart like that. Most of you aren't looking at Microsoft. You're so concentrated on only what you're interested in. So you're not getting that learning curve. Guys, Stefan has Amazon right now, 129.97, okay? Very tight stop, all right? That's true too. They don't know what they're looking for and maybe blaming it on psychology, but you have to dissect these charts. And this is where Cliff's coaching group is very helpful. This is where having a trading buddy is very helpful. This is where being in the chat room is very helpful. You need to bounce these ideas off of people until you know the business well enough that you don't have to do that anymore. That's a couple, two, three years. It's always better to get a second opinion, always, until you are the opinion. Does that make sense? It's like, hey, I needed a second opinion until I am the doctor. And even then, occasionally, you might want one. All right, but you, to get to that level means reviewing thousands of charts, not hundreds, thousands of charts. And the more charts you look at, the more charts you dissect, the better off that you will be. All right, so I hope today's lesson was an eye opener, even though it was somewhat basic with regard to charts, we got granular on a few charts, 15, 20 minutes on one chart. So I hope today's lesson will remind you that you're not above the chart, you're not better than the chart. All right, you need to do this all the time as a reminder. It's like an alcoholic going to an AA meeting. You need a reminder. I don't care how many years you've been sober. Remind yourself why you do this. Review those charts every day. Don't be scared to ask questions. Don't be scared to have somebody look at the chart you're looking at negatively. Don't be scared to be wrong. It's okay. Unmal and I had completely differing opinions on Meta today. He made money off Meta today. I thought it was hard money. He thought it was easy money. We had a difference of opinion makes the world go round. He was confident in his, I was confident in mine. But unless you study charts, you're never gonna get to that level, all right? Study them every single day and run them by people. Cliff's coaching group, the trading partner, et cetera, and so forth, all right? So I hope that you guys enjoyed that lesson today on dissecting charts. I hope it makes you a better chart reader and ultimately a more profitable trader. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.